is the Cheval Brun. Brun. What does Brun mean? Sir? Okay, but it's French. It's, uh, brown. Brown. All right. So this is the brown horse, not the white horse. All right. Not the Cheval Blanc. Or there's also another white called the Cheval Noir. All right. So um, this is owned by the Rivier family, uh, Maison Rivier. All right. So this is planted, uh, of course, on the uh, on the right bank. Uh, this is a uh, set to be known. A Grand Cru uh, appellation, all right. So, in terms of soil uh, differentiation, uh, differentiation, uh, I mean, of course, on the left bank we have what we call hot soils, more gravel, all right. So, much more suitable, hence, there is a uh, high percentage of Cabernet Sauvignon being planted on the left bank of the estuary because of the higher density of uh, gravel or hot soils. And on the right uh, is what we call the land of Merlot, where appellations of Saint Emilion, Pomera, and Fronsac is situated and of course uh, this is where arguably it's a homeland of Merlot right? because the, the soil type there is mainly uh, clay right? which is cool and uh, Merlot are suited more to uh, cooler soils right? uh, because as they, as they early they ripen slightly early and of course it, uh, I mean, of course, the soil type is of course suitable all right, to really push uh, Merlot in its expression of, of plumminess or roundness in contrast to the robust I mean uh, High tenons or, uh, or structured uh, reds from the left bank. All right, so this is from the 2010 vintage. So arguably, uh, as we said, in contrast to 2009 uh, vintage, which is a bit more uh, restrained, a bit more long-lived, uh, and of course a bit more structured. So let's taste the wine together. So this is a wine which is a, which has a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc. Just check on the bottle for the percentage of the cepage or blend. All right, so it's eighty-five percent Merlot and ten uh, percent Cabernet Sauvignon with a balance of uh, Cabernet Franc at five percent. So I think immediately from I think what we taste, what we gather on the nose aroma of this wine, it's much more softer, much more round. All right, we don't get the mint, uh, the cassis, all right, of uh, the cabernet, cabernet dominant uh, first wine. Right, this is a bit more plush, more plummy, and on the palate too, it's much more supple, much more round, uh, softer. All right, in contrast to the uh, first one, if you would agree. All right, so once again. Uh, Good acidity, freshness, and of course, nice roundness. Yes. All right. So alcohol level for wine number two is fourteen percent, one four. Of course, uh, for the first one, uh, it's also at fourteen. All right. And the first one, which was the Omedoc, is a blend of forty-five percent Merlot, fifty percent Cabernet Sauvignon, and five percent uh, Petit Verdot for the first one. Both at fourteen uh, percent. So both, once again, both of these wines are, I mean, it's, it's a good, uh, how should I say, a good, ex a good example of how, I mean, uh, both uh, sides of the Bordeaux expresses uh, the grapes differently, not only due to its uh, terroir, but of course due to its uh, blend, as we all uh, discovered together earlier with regards to uh, the wines of Bordeaux, essentially uh, the blending, the blends of all these international varieties being one of its uh, hallmarks. Giving its its unique and true identity. Because I guess these two wines would really go uh, really well with some of the canapes we had earlier, some of the, the beef, or I think uh, the tannins and the fruit really, really cuts through uh, the fat and the flavor. I think giving it a quite an interesting match in general. All right, so we move on to the last 